So <clears throat> let us go back to our um, questions. So uh, we have introduced Carnot curves in the space H and uh, uh, so now we have a, a, a definition and uh, we have questions. So uh, th the first thing I want to do is to um, mimic somehow what we did in the first example. So maybe uh, write down some differential equations for these uh, kernel curves and try to compute uh, by hands the uh, non-commutation term about uh, uh, the infinitesimal movements that corresponds to uh, uh, our situations. So just to see that we are along the same lines. And uh, after this, uh, I want to answer also uh, good question so why should we consider these curves because I have introduced them uh, just uh, okay let us remove this uh, third component but uh, this is not uh, enough for intuitions of course uh, it seems uh, too much academic and uh, so uh, I will speak about uh, uh, the isoperimetric uh, problem uh, on the plane so somehow another questions and see how uh, these curves in these groups can help to answer the question or maybe just reformulate this question. So see uh, that uh, Carnot curve somehow uh, represents uh, possible solutions for this problem or just uh, we will see. And, uh, uh, and after this, this will permit us to uh, introduce uh, uh, indeed a, a distance a metric structure on, uh, on this Eisenberg group and we will uh, consider um, uh, different questions. So first uh, of all, uh, um, what are um, somehow um, uh, curves that realizes the distance because uh, as you know in the standard Euclidean geometry uh, we can move uh, from any point to any other but if you want to do it in the best way so realizing the distance is uh, this is given by segments so once you have a distance a metric space uh, also you can uh, ask yourself what are um, uh, curves that realize the distance if the distance is uh, defined uh, with length of, of curves and uh, and so we will go to the, through these questions but um, let us start and um, maybe it's better uh, because this long introduction then one gets lost and so the first thing is to take this and write it uh, as uh, we did uh, in the very beginning for the uh, situations of of the car in the plane. So, mm, so uh, if we have a, a Carnot curve, so a Carnot curve satisfies uh, these uh, relations. So, um, a Carnot curve is uh, a solution of this system. So we have one equation. So this equation gives a relation between the derivative of z with x, y and their derivative. So you can think to this as uh, uh, being able to choose freely um, x prime and y prime. Okay, so putting it in this way, x prime equal y1, y prime equal y2 and uh, z prime equal now one half of x u2 minus uh, but let me write in this way so it's minus y u1 y plus u2 x okay so somehow i uh, rewrote this in this way okay this uh, of course uh, is uh, equivalent to that and now i can write uh, it in a form that is similar to what uh, we wrote before. So u1, 1, 0, minus y over 2, plus u2, um, 0, 1, x over 2. So now uh, these are the two uh, infinitesimal movements. or vector fields 
okay? And uh, each of these uh, movements uh, or vector fields, if you now get used to the world, maybe I can use vector fields and there's no more scaring. It's me. Someone was saying that we do not really understand things. We just get used to that in mathematics. So it's a way to, you say the same word six, seven times and then you can use it. It's no more a problem. So uh, if I want to uh, consider uh, separate uh, movements, as I did before, I will write down uh, the differential equations that are related with this. In this case, also things are uh, very simple. The first one is this, the second one is this. Okay, so if you uh, solve this, uh, then you will get x of t. So I have initial condition that I call x0, y0, z0. So uh, x of t uh, will be x0 plus t, uh, y of t is y0, and z is just the integral of this, so it will be z0. Uh, minus, since uh, y is a constant, it will be uh, minus y0 over 2 times t, right? Hope you agree. And uh, in this uh, right hand side, we have a similar situation. You see, we always integrate the one that is constant, so there is only linear term. So now, uh, in this case, um, uh, when we uh, compute uh, uh, the uh, a, B, A minus 1, B minus 1 term as before. So the commutation, let's say, term between uh, the movement, uh, we discover uh, something that is uh, interesting. Maybe I should do this. Remember that matrices here uh, were nilpotent and uh, nilpotent of order 2. When we compute the exponential uh, of these matrices, uh, the series stopped and uh, it was uh, actually a polynomial. And we will see that here is the same. So the, the Taylor expansion will, uh, will stop. In the same order, actually. So you will not be surprised that it will be a polynomial because we have just polynomial here. So we we'll just uh, have a composite at number of co a composition of polynomials. So it will be a polynomial, but it's of order two. So what we do, we start with the initial point x0, y0, z0. First, uh, we do. Um, so let me call this. Uh, uh, um, a and this B. I will start with A now, but you see it's not really relevant. So it's x0 plus t, y0, z0 minus uh, y0 over 2 times t. Then I do B. When I do B, I have x0 plus t, y0 plus t. And then I have to uh, add x0 plus t over 2t. Okay? Because now I have at the second time the x0 
is this. Indeed, what happens in the first two uh, components, it's uh, quite, uh, uh, let me say, Euclidean. So uh, add, add, remove, remove, and nothing will change at the end. Uh, so here is plus t minus t, so it will be x0. Here is this. And so here I will have to uh, uh, subtract, um, uh, sorry, to add uh, y0 because it's, uh, uh, so I, I brought c but actually is a minus 1. So here is a minus this but with the new uh, y0 and uh, with b minus 1, so here you have x0, y0. And in the end, you will have this, 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 and minus x0 over 2t, okay? So you, uh, you write everything, and you have this. If I did it uh, correctly, is this, which means x0, y0, z0, plus t square, 0, 0, 1. Nothing else, no, no rest, no remainder, okay? Uh, do you agree with the computation? So actually here uh, there is uh, so uh, this that goes away with this and then uh, when we uh, go in the fourth line uh, we have to remove x0 over 2t which uh, removes also this and so we have t squared over 2, t squared over 2. And um, yes, it seems correct. So uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, if you uh, write now uh, uh, these two uh, vector fields, let me uh, call, uh, so the first movement big X. If I use the notation I used uh, before, so the basis, let me call partial X, partial Y, partial Z, this will be uh, uh, dx minus y over 2 dz, okay? So this is just a notation for the basis up to, it's still there, yes, great. And the second one is uh, this. And uh, uh, their commutator, which is what is getting out here, notice that does not depend anymore on the initial uh, position and uh, let me also uh, denote it in this way, okay? This is the commutator, it is just uh, dz, okay? So this is notation for a vector field that comes out at order t square from this, okay? And uh, mm, these three vector fields are independent at every point because if we if we put this in a matrix so uh, the determinant let let us put in a matrix, the column first vector field, second vector field, third one. So this is a invertible matrix. So this means uh, uh, that uh, the uh, space generated by this uh, uh, three. Uh, columns is 3 at every point, okay? Okay, or x, y, z, if you wish, okay? This is a key property. Indeed, um, 
this is exactly uh, the property maybe we will see this more in general later that tells you that uh, actually you can uh, connect every two points in the space with uh, curves that are tangent to uh, this uh, direction so given by the infinitesim corresponding infinitesimal movements so uh, indeed the idea is that you have only a limited set of movements but uh, with combination of these movements you can produce brackets that uh, maybe you can reach slower because you see that uh, again this is the order t square but still you can move and uh, if uh, with all brackets you can produce all missing directions uh, you can reach uh, the all space so i will write maybe a general statement at the end of the uh, uh, of this uh, uh, course let's say or, but uh, you will not be surprised of the statement uh, once we but the, the proof is a uh, is not uh, uh, requires some more uh, uh, work intuition is a uh, i think at some point is supported by evidence but uh, um, uh, the proof requires some some more work okay so this is uh, for what concerns uh, Carnot curves and uh, um, uh, but indeed at uh, this stage i did not really uh, uh, I just uh, stated that this is the condition that permits to reach uh, from one position or <coughs> other position, but uh, it's not clear, I did not really prove. And uh, so to uh, understand this, maybe we can uh, give an interpretation of uh, Carnot curves in terms of another problem. So uh, let's say that my viewpoint on the Eisenberg group uh, the beginning was uh, more algebraic because uh, I decided to justify the word group because we uh, are used to speak about Eisenberg group and then move to other things and then forget that this is a group. So I decided to start with that but uh, the one of possible uh, way to um, let's say meet first time this Eisenberg group is uh, as a, um, uh, or Carnot curves more precisely is when you uh, study uh, the isoperimetric problem in the plane so I will just remember what it is and uh, what is the link uh, so let's do this ah maybe this is was good to leave uh -huh. I go there. <coughs> so, um, Actually, what I will uh, consider is a kind of a dual problem of the isoperimetric one, but let me write the classical uh, one. The plane, let's say. When I say plane, I mean really R2. Now, so the problem is uh, uh, this one. Find the maximal area enclosed by a closed, let's say, closed curve in R2 of fixed length L. L is a real number, maybe positive now. So you have a, a L, your real number, and you look uh, for a set omega, which is uh, 
uh, the area enclosed by uh, the curve and, uh, um, and you want given L to maximize the, uh, the, uh, the area. And uh, um, solutions, I don't know if you know, but uh, it's quite classical, are circles. Okay? So here I'm not, uh, my goal is not to solve the problem because we know the answer, but more or less as I did at the very beginning, to use something that I know to motivate uh, the underlying uh, geometry. So solution are circles, in the sense that circles maximizes. So, um, and uh, the dual is a perimetric problem if you want. Uh, so here we are fixing the length and try to maximize the area. So what we can do uh, on the other side, do a problem in the sense that uh, we want to uh, fix the area we are enclosing and minimize the, uh, uh, the length of the curve. So do a problem. Is uh, this. Find uh, the shortest curve, uh, let's say uh, closed, since it was closed, curve, uh, and closing uh, uh, an area, a fixed area, let's say see a real number. Indeed, uh, when you work with this, you can think to a signed area, so, so an area which takes uh, uh, plus or minus uh, in terms of the orientation uh, of the curve you're taking. So as an area here, area of a set, you can uh, think uh, uh, simply to evaluate uh, the integral over omega of the double integral over this region, okay? This is uh, okay for everybody. And uh, um, so to, uh, uh, to understand uh, the link uh, of uh, uh, this with uh, the, uh, our uh, Carnot curve, uh, we need uh, we need a formula that maybe I will put uh, over there. So I will try to do this. Uh -huh. If I do this, this will, okay. Not a big deal. Okay, indeed, uh, what, is, uh, what uh, happens is, uh, uh, is this, uh, is that, uh, uh, so let uh, gamma, let me call, uh, uh, maybe I should call this uh, alpha now, uh, from zero t, uh, r2, be uh, a parameterization of the boundary of our omega. So now my omega is a nice set uh, with good parameterization. So what I want to do is to write the area of omega. So this is a uh, closed, okay? Uh, indeed, uh, it could be smooth or also piecewise smooth will be okay. If it's piecewise smooth, uh, we will split the integral uh, over the smooth part. And uh, uh, the area of omega, so it will be the uh, mm, uh, integral, uh, double integral uh, over omega, dx, dy. And so to make the link, I will use this, uh, um, 
uh, green uh, formula or Stokes formula. So I will write it uh, in the particular case and then maybe write a more general case. So uh, this is equal to uh, the integral over the boundary. So you have over omega and the boundary is alpha. So you have an equality between double integral and the integral along the curve. So I will write and then uh, explain what does it mean, this. Uh, one half uh, of uh, this quantity, x dy minus, sorry, minus y dx. Uh, so uh, this is a, a differential form, but if this has no meaning for you, uh, the meaning is this, is the integral over the parameterization, okay? So uh, let's say uh, alpha of t is x of t, y of t, it's a planar curve. So x will become x of t and dy will be y prime. So nothing very uh, complicated, it's just x of t, y prime of t, minus y prime of t, x of t, dt, okay? So if you wish, you can just skip and forget. Uh, Come on. You have to, to switch the prime in the second. Ah, so yes, I'm sorry. No Thank you. Okay, so, uh, okay, questions? Just uh, like this. And uh, uh, so, uh, um, so more in general, Uh, you have this uh, um, green uh, Stokes formula. Uh, let me let me write it. I will write uh, first uh, the uh, right hand side, and then uh, the left hand side. If you have uh, this a function p and q, which are evaluated. This, this is generalization of this with two functions, p and q. In this case, uh, p is just minus y, q is just uh, x, okay? This, on, the, on that side, uh, you will have uh, this. Okay, and if you want uh, uh, to write it uh, uh, in this uh, language, it is this. Okay, but this uh, just uh, if you like it. Just a short way. So the, this is also a particular case of general, more general theorem, uh, which works. Uh, in many other situations, but if you never, if you have never seen this form, it could uh, seem a little bit magic. And uh, uh, why all this? Because if we uh, did no mistake and the sign that I choose were not wrong, uh, this uh, thing here uh, should be uh, the same we have here. I'm happy that's the case because. Uh, not easy with uh, the choice of the sign. But uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, we can do uh, this thing. We can do this and uh, take uh, in R2 now, let us stay in R2. And let's take a curve that starts uh, from the origin, joining uh, so the origin with some other point, P. Uh, let us call this uh, P. 
and uh, um, then what is uh, happening is that uh, um, uh, one can uh, uh, consider so let us parameterize this okay with the curve this half of t equal x of t z of uh, y of t and then define z of t as the area area enclosed by the closed curve given by alpha and then this straight line uh, so let's call uh, this uh, omega of t because this uh, will depend on t and uh, so the idea is that uh, a curve a planar curve x of t y of t uh, so this will be curves starting starting from the origin so i will uh, limit myself to this case for simplicity but uh, all the arguments uh, can be adapted uh, just a constant that will change uh, can be lifted to a curve x of t y of t z of t in r3 which we know we can identify with our Heisenberg group where z of t is the area of uh, the set omega t spanned by uh, the curve uh, and uh, this curve is a Carnot curve okay so indeed you have a, a correspondence uh, between uh, curves that are uh, lift of planar curves where this lift is, is built with the area so the third component you add is the area and uh, kernel curves so in this case we start from the origin just uh, uh, to simplify our discussion but uh, actually it does change nothing and uh, let me uh, do a picture so if this is your planar curve what is the lift the lift is the same curve where at each time t the z component is the area okay so let me do it uh, in this way maybe i use this uh, and at each time so this uh, the z coordinate of this point is exactly the area you have here okay so uh, a little bit as in the case of the uh, car what you have is that uh, not all curves in this r3 are uh, uh, of course uh, uh, curves that are lift of planar curves those that are uh, lift of planar curves are exactly Carnot curves okay and the relation goes through um, the blackboards that are above and below because uh, over there you have a formula for the area and here you have a formula for uh, the, the equation satisfied by Carnot curves okay of course z prime is this so z will be the integral uh, and in that case uh, 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 there is no uh, z0 because we integrate along a closed curve and uh, um, okay so this is the link uh, between uh, the two things so somehow uh, Carnot curves are uh, are um, uh, curve that corresponds to uh, those lifts 
In this case, it is uh, not difficult then to understand um, why we can connect every two points with the Carnot curve. Of course, to connect every two points, it is enough to connect every point with the origin. And then, once I go to the origin, and to connect a point with the origin, uh, what does it mean? It means that, uh, so if you want to connect 0, 0, 0 to x1, y1, z1, what do we have to do? So we have a point here, that is x1, y1, z1. This is x1, y1. And we are just looking for a curve, a planar curve, that goes from here to here with an area that is given by Z1, okay? So just uh, take one. In this way, uh, you find one. Of course, you can find many, as many as you wish. And uh, uh, the question could be, uh, which is the best one? Okay, uh, in which sense then uh, the best one? So in uh, term of uh, this uh, 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 problem here, if you write it here, uh, we can say that this problem is uh, can be written in this uh, in this term. Find the infimum of the length of alpha such that the area is given by C. Okay? So, if we look to this uh, uh, condition in terms of uh, curve in the three-dimensional space, we are just, uh, let's say, uh, rewriting this constraint into uh, reaching some specified point in the three-dimensional space. So I am putting uh, uh, this condition in into the points I have to reach. Okay? And so what is uh, natural to do if you want to uh, keep in mind the link between these problems, this problem, let's say the Eisenberg group, and uh, this problem, is to say that the length, so to introduce a notion of length for Carnot curves, and say that the length of the Carnot curve is just the length of its projection in onto uh, the plane. Okay? So say that uh, uh, this is the uh, planar curve, this is its lift, and for my new geometry that actually I'm just defining now, I'm saying that the length of this curve is this. Okay? So uh, we give another definition. The length of a Carnot curve is, by definition, the length, the Euclidean length, let me write, of its planar projection. Why we should do this? Because uh, if you use this definition, if you use this definition, what is now a solution to this problem? Since the length of the planar projection, by definition, is the length of the Carnot curve in the big space, I am just uh, trying to minimize, find the infimum, of the length of a curve in the Heisenberg group, which is Carnot and joins two fixed points. Okay? So if we were in the Euclidean space, find the infimum of the length of curves joining two fixed points, it means to find 
what uh, we can call length minimizers or geodesics in some more geometric uh, language. So in some sense what we have done, we have um, put a structure on uh, this Heisenberg group, so said I consider only some restricted class of curves, kernel curves. For this curve I define a notion of length and now what I'm saying is that uh, uh, finding the uh, shortest curve connecting two points in this new setting, for instance, means to solve this problem. Okay? So it's a reformulation, it's not a solution of this problem, it's a reformulation. And uh, of course the idea is that uh, you can, mm, let's say, develop more uh, theory behind this uh, kind of structure and then uh, uh, say more in general how to compute the minimizer of this uh, of this uh, kind of um, in this kind of geometry and so for instance solve also problem like, like this uh, what uh, uh, what uh, I am going to do now is uh, uh, somehow the opposite uh, meaning that uh, we know that solutions are circles so let us use this information to understand how is the geometry I have built here, okay? Because actually um, uh, the new thing now is to investigate the metric uh, properties uh, here because uh, there we know solutions are circle and uh, nothing, we will learn nothing. And uh, here for instance we, we, can, uh, we can learn something uh, which we can try in the remaining time then to uh, generalize, or at least give some ideas, and then, uh, so this will be probably also tomorrow, and uh, show uh, also how this geometry enters in some applications. For instance, I was mentioning one about uh, image reconstruction, which is uh, also interesting and, by the way, related to the car model. So somehow this will close the circle, let's say. Okay, so um, uh, let me check what time it is. So, uh, 45 minutes. Okay, good. Uh, so, all this. Very good. Okay. Um, this goes up also. But maybe then, they, but then it will be difficult to put it down. No. No. Okay. Let's do this, and then try to. But I do it like this. Okay. So, as I said, um, uh, so the metric structure as we said, uh, given a kernel curve curve in H uh, we define its length as the length of the planar projection. And, uh, and then this permits to uh, define a distance. to introduce a distance which is uh, called uh, sometimes uh, uh, Carnot Caratheodori distance or uh, also sub Riemannian distance so Distance from two points, P and Q, let's write this way, uh, 
uh, what is this? Is the infimum of mm, the length of curves. So let me write uh, uh, S R to means this is a sub remind. Okay. So if uh, uh, so if uh, the projection of gamma is alpha, then I'm defining the length of gamma as a length in the plane R2 of alpha. Okay, so the, the length, subliminal length of a Carnot curve. Uh, so if gamma is Carnot and its projection on the onto, onto R2, so is uh, alpha, then the length is defined this way. So here the projection on R2 of x, y, z is just x, y. So if we project a curve, we have a curve on the plane. And uh, given that uh, gamma is a Carnot curve joining P and Q. So you see that uh, in this uh, uh, big space, uh, uh, I may be stressing this for uh, a lot of time, but uh, uh, we are minimizing a length of curves joining two points, but then uh, we have this restriction that the curve should be curved. Okay? Okay, good. Let us now try to understand some properties of this uh, distance. So the first uh, things we uh, might be interested with is now uh, what is the uh, curve, the shortest curve. So if P is the origin and Q is the point there. What is the curve, which will be, of course, a Carnot curve, realizing the Subramanian distance? Okay, let me write more. Oh, Carnot karate I write this. I should add also this. Between P and Q. What this will be? It will be a curve, gamma, which is the lift of an arc of a, a circle. Okay, so uh, the projection down will be uh, an arc of a circle and uh, an arc of circle uh, such that the um, uh, area spanned uh, up to there is equal to uh, Z1. So if this is here and this is Q, then I will look for a circle here such that this is equal to Z1. And here, what do we have? We will have an arc of uh, an ellipse. Helix. Okay. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe I can take that one. Uh, okay, I can do this. So uh, the construction uh, goes like this. So uh, uh, the general contr construction construction to uh, to find the length minimizers or the basics, as I said, uh, from the origin to a point x1 y1 z1 what is is look things in the plane so write the origin the plane and the point x1 y1 and then we know that uh, the uh, center of uh, the uh, all circles joining these two points stays on the axis of this segment, okay? And then uh, what you do along this segment, you will find a unique center of the circle spanning a fixed area, because what do you have? You have three cases. E either your Z1 is zero. In this case, if you want to span area zero, your trajectory is the, uh, uh, let's say, area zero uh, is this one. If you want to span a positive area or a negative area, you will stay from one side or the other side. And so for instance, uh, on this side, so this depends on the orientation. Let's say that on this side we are positive, so we have this kind of circles, the circle that have this as a diameter or uh, very big circles, okay? So when you move the center here, you will have uh, a sp you are spanning an area that increases monotonically going to plus infinity. On the other side, you will have uh, circles that uh, have an area that is negative, because this depends on the orientation, the integral is a sign, and uh, is going monotonically to minus infinity. So given your Z1, uh, there exists unique center and you are writing down a unique, uh, a unique uh, uh, arc of circle. If you look to things in the three-dimensional space, so meaning looking to the lifts, what is happening? What is happening? Is happening that here you have uh, the trajectories that span uh, zero area that are simple, simply uh, straight lines contained in the xy planes. Or x, a, xy plane. Okay. So here you will have this uh, this kind of uh, of trajectories here. And indeed, all curves since they are Carnot curves, must be tangent to this plane. So all other curves are this. What are all other curves? Are uh, spirals, so helices, uh, projecting on some, uh, on some suitable uh, uh, circle downstairs. So this indeed will continue 
and do like this, okay, uh, drawing a circle uh, downstairs, mm, maybe like this, okay, and uh, all curves will be like this, okay. So imagine uh, now that uh, uh, we want uh, to understand more precisely what is uh, this distance. So we have to quantify these things a little bit more. And uh, um, uh, so what we can do is to write down formulas for these curves. This is possible. I can write it down and then you can check. This is, <coughs> this is uh, not... Uh, uh, not difficult, uh, but uh, what could be interesting is to uh, try at least to grasp what is uh, uh, the ball in this distance. So what is the set of uh, points with distance less or equal than uh, one, for instance, or uh, epsilon uh, in this geometry. So what is uh, the ball with respect to this distance of center zero radius one. What is the shape of this? So um, to do this, we have first to understand uh, something that is the following. Of course, uh, to reach, uh, I mean, um, to reach uh, the same point, what we can do is uh, to use uh, I mean, ma many circles. Why I choose exactly this one? Because uh, I did not um, follow an entire circle, uh, let's say, up to the origin, okay? Because uh, in principle, um, uh, let me uh, maybe uh, explain uh, what I want to say better here. in another picture. What I wanted to say is that uh, when we are looking to curves that minimize the length, indeed we look only to projection of circles that did not follow the entire circle. So, which uh, uh, for which we have, uh, we have done no more than an entire uh, tour. So, uh, for instance, if you uh, look to this uh, uh, situation like here, and you want, uh, and you want uh, uh, to reach, uh, for instance, uh, uh, this point, what you can do, you, uh, you can take this circle, okay, and then go again, and then make this uh, circle, piece of circle twice. Of course, you will have spun an area which is given by the full circle plus this, okay? But uh, the same area uh, can be spun by another circle that maybe is bigger, like uh, this, okay? And it turns out that this one is shorter, okay? So solutions of this problem are always arcs of circle, let's say sub-arcs, mm, no more than, uh, you do not follow the same uh, circle more than once. So this is, a, this is important. And uh, so what, uh, what is uh, happening here is that uh, um, um, uh, indeed uh, when you follow this path, when you reach to the origin, this uh, trajectory is no more the minimizer, is no more the trajectory that realizes the length. So what I want to say here is that uh, uh, as soon as we touch the vertical axis, we are no more length minimizing. So uh, uh, there is a point uh, after which uh, we are no more inside the ball. It is, uh, this is uh, uh, for sure. Okay, if you want to reach uh, distance one. Okay, and uh, uh, so what is happening here? 
maybe I can uh, draw the picture. Maybe in the, in the I had also a picture there. But uh, so what is uh, happening here is that uh, the sphere has this this shape. At this point, indeed, where these trajectories uh, touch the origin, uh, this produces a singularity of uh, of uh, of the sphere. So what is happening is that the sphere has the shape of an apple, let's say, of this form. So uh, it is symmetric with respect to this axis and uh, the trajectories are either this horizontal line or part of uh, helices that uh, touch uh, the border. Okay, you have this, then you have those that arrive exactly here and then you have also those that uh, stays inside but then uh, they are no more minimizing. Okay. And uh, so uh, mm, this is uh, the picture of, uh, uh, of the ball, which has uh, uh, this singularity here. Mm, I'm not sure whether I uh, can show, I had a picture, but I, I'm not sure I can uh, put, because uh, I said no, but uh, maybe I realize. I think I, think I have one. Uh, one picture that maybe is better than this one. But I should put the password. I don't know the password. <laughs> I should pay to oh know no, the password. Do you know the password? No, no password. No password. Ah, no. good. It's a trick. Switch user, enter password. Ah. But now this will go to the internet and everybody will know. So uh, I should uh, this picture. I want to show this picture. So what is this? So this is uh, the sphere in uh, in the Eisenberg group. Is exactly this. So this is a true. Uh, uh, I mean, a picture made by the computer. So here, what you have inside here. So let's say that this is the image of all endpoints of curves of length one. So what you do if you want to produce what is the ball. Okay, so let's say that we uh, draw the boundary. So the sphere points at the distance exactly one. Okay, what do you do? You draw all the points that are reached by, traje by a trajectory that have length one. But then we have to remove those for which the corresponding trajectory is not minimizing, maybe because uh, of this reason, okay? Because so the points you have to remove are exactly those that are inside and uh, that uh, form this uh, strange set. So the sphere is the exterior part of the surface, so it's uh, smooth uh, up to removing these two points, okay? What you have inside are exactly uh, points reached by curves that are, uh, uh, corresponds to uh, circles that are uh, very, very small, but uh, that you follow for many, many times. So they produce a big area, okay? So of course, this is a little bit uh, heuristic, I understand. I mean, what I draw here uh, uh, somehow builds up to uh, some intuition, but I hope this uh, image here is uh, convincing more than this, I don't know. If you have questions, do not uh, hesitate. Complaints also, we accept. <laughs> and okay, so in this picture, uh, what is not clear is what is happening to the size of the ball, okay? So this ball not only is uh, 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 not smooth because of these two points. So you have to forget now about this. So this picture is, uh, as I said, the set of final points, of course, of length one, but the, the, the boundary of the ball, so the sphere, is only the exterior part. And uh, what is uh, happening is that, so this is uh, for a fixed, uh, uh, fixed radius, say one. What is happening if we uh, change uh, radius and change scale? So maybe for this is good uh, to do uh, uh, little computation and some formula about these uh, curves. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, let me write uh, formulas for this. And uh, formula for this. So uh, I will uh, uh, um, just write down the formula. So formulas for uh, 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 Carnot uh, curve uh, that corresponds to lift of a circle. So uh, along the x and y, along the x and y coordinates, you will have something that projects uh, to a circle. Okay? So uh, here, you, this will be a circle, uh, a circle with a radius 1 over a, so I will have a parameter that I call a, uh, with the center, uh, I will write it down. I will use a standard formula, so I am adapting uh, this uh, uh, here, and uh, angular speed, uh, angular speed equal to a. So a is the angular speed of the circle, it has this center and this radius, and uh, this is the formula. So this is 1 over a uh, sinus a t plus theta 0 minus sinus of theta 0. And uh, here it is 1 over a, uh, there is a minus here to make it uh, consistent. Okay, if you see, this is a curve that starts from the origin, so that's the reason of this minus, okay, starts from the origin, because when t is zero, you have zero. Uh, it is a circle of radius one over a, which is here, and um, uh, the tangent vector, if you compute the derivative when t is zero, is cosine theta zero, sinus theta zero, because you have exactly the derivative of sine and minus cosine. Okay, this is uh, done in such a way that uh, on the plane the tangent vector is uh, cosine theta zero, sine theta zero. So it is a circle that goes this way. Okay? And then you compute as the area. So you integrate uh, the, the formula that now probably is behind uh, Here, so z, you write this uh, and you integrate. And once you do this, uh, you get this formula. Okay, so, uh, okay, these are uh, mm, formulas for. Um, formulas for curves that project to a circle. And then, of course, you have uh, uh, the straight lines, okay? So, uh, if you think in terms of uh, uh, the horizontal uh, directions that correspond to the movement that were admissible, and the vertical one, we will see a difference in the sense that since we have these uh, uh, horizontal lines, on these two directions, x and y, the geometry is like uh, the Euclidean. So if you want to uh, reach a point uh, in, uh, with area zero, we just take a straight line. So along the x-y direction, the geometry is uh, more or less, uh, is uh, actually exactly the Euclidean one. What happens if you want to move vertically? So you will see that the distance scales with a uh, factor uh, two, uh, in the sense of t square. So we can see it uh, in uh, in uh, in this way, in uh, from this formula, 
for instance, let the uh, arrays here. And um, indeed, what is happening is that uh, uh, to reach the vertical axis with uh, one of this curve, what I have to do, I have to follow this curve up to time uh, 2 pi over a. Because if I follow this curve uh, up to time 2 pi over a, this cosine will be equal to this. Okay, so uh, the first time time uh, a curve of the form uh, reaches the first, let's say, positive time because at t equals zero is this reaches the vertical axis is at uh, t equal to p over a. Okay? So x at this time and y are zero. Right? Just uh, because uh, we have chosen this. And what about z? z at 2p over a, what is this? When you put here 2p over a, this is zero. Okay? So it remains only this part. And this uh, is equal to uh, p over a square. Okay? So what is this saying? This is saying that uh, in time that goes as 1 over a, we move vertically at scale 1 over a square. Okay? So this distance from the origin to a point that is on the vertical axis, it is something that goes as the square root of the zeta coordinate. Not as zeta, but as the square root. Okay? Just because of this. Okay? The fact, you should think to this way, the fact that if I use energy t, I move uh, of uh, size t square, is saying that the distance is a square root with respect to, okay? And so, um, indeed, what, uh, what uh, uh, turns out from uh, uh, this analysis, which of course I am, let's say, compressing in a very short uh, uh, time lapse because of uh, the length of our lectures is a uh, following estimate for the distance, uh, which uh, is um, also saying uh, what is the behavior of uh, uh, balls of the, uh, the, at a small scale, for instance. So let me, uh, what I wanted to do, maybe I can erase this. This is not at the top, so I can do this. Good. <coughs> so it turns out that uh, one can prove uh, the following <coughs> estimate. I think you will not be uh, surprised by this. So it is also called ball box estimate. 
because there is involved a ball, uh, that is our ball, and two boxes. That is saying that uh, the distance squared, let's say, from zero, so I took, uh, I took the square to remove uh, this uh, square root, from zero to a point x, y, z, um, well, let me write uh, maybe with uh, uh, with uh, uh, double inequality is better. Uh, so there exists c1 and c2 positive such that distance square from the origin to the point x, y, z is controlled from one side by this and the other side by this. Okay, so the distance from uh, uh, the origin, the origin is a fixed point, has this estimate. So you see, it's not uh, like uh, Euclidean geometry. In Euclidean geometry, or almost Euclidean, I would have uh, uh, a square here. So the point is that here, the, 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 the sides are not the same. So our, uh, our ball is like an apple, let's say, okay? But uh, the horizontal size and the vertical one are not the same. So if you take a ball of size R, Along the horizontal direction, you will have something that has a size r, and on the vertical one has a size r square. So the idea is that uh, you can put outside and inside two boxes. two boxes which have size r, r, r squared, multiplied by some constant, okay? And the idea is there is this relation between the different scales. So the, this horizontal direction are those corresponding to admissible movements, this vertical one corresponds to the non-admissible, and um, uh, so you have uh, somehow these two properties are very natural. One is different scaling due to the property we have mentioned, and the other one is the singularity. Singularity is uh, natural, it's there. It's, uh, there, was n there were nothing at the beginning that was not smooth, it just uh, appeared. And um, so um, we still have uh, uh, 10 minutes, so maybe uh, I will uh, end up by saying uh, what happens if we move from the origin and uh, uh, link this thing with the fact that at the beginning we had a group. So indeed we are not forced to work at the origin. That simplified a little bit the discussion, but also um, uh, it is related to the fact that we can use the group uh, property and also the homogeneity to, um, uh, to move let's say, all uh, what we have uh, discussed at every point, in the sense that uh, um, our distance, and indeed all uh, our problem, is uh, invariant by uh, a left translation and scales uh, well with respect to the dilation I have introduced. So remember, We had uh, uh, given uh, P uh, in H, we had the transformation which was the left translation, okay, and the, uh, the distance is compatible Uh, with the group structure actually is invariant uh, so actually invariant 
what does it mean? It means that for every pair of points q q prime in H, the subriemannian distance between q and q prime is the same if you multiply both by uh, p. Okay? Of course, if you take, for instance, p to be the inverse of q, then uh, you can uh, say uh, that uh, the subriemannian distance from q and q prime is uh, the same between the identity and q minus 1 q, so uh, prime. So this is saying that once you know the distance among identity and another point, thanks to the group structure, you see the group structure is not only compatible with uh, the differential structure, so the smooth uh, infinity, but also with the metric structure we have, uh, we have uh, put. The other uh, thing we have introduced was the uh, was the um, uh, dilation. So, given epsilon positive, we set. Uh, delta epsilon of x, y, z equal to epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon square z. We have already seen that this delta epsilon is uh, compatible with uh, the group structure. And what happens here is that uh, for p and q in h, the distance between uh, the dilation of p, dilation of q, is uh, epsilon times the distance between p and q. Okay? So, uh, morally, what uh, you are saying? You are saying that uh, if we multiply by epsilon x1 and y1, you will produce automatically with uh, the, the circle that is naturally associated, an area that is multiplied by epsilon square. So this is, uh, see, this is uh, natural. So the length, and somehow the length are multiplied by epsilon, so the distance is multiplied by epsilon, but inside you need to put here an epsilon square, because uh, one of the coordinates is uh, an area. Okay? So somehow the distance is homogeneous, but uh, the dilation is not a standard, it's just a rescaling. So, the distance is So, these two properties mm, essentially permit to uh, reproduce all the arguments we have uh, did, for instance, these estimates at, one, at uh, the origin at every point, the first one. And the second one permits uh, to uh, study what is happening at every scale, not only at a fixed scale, as I have written there what is the ball of radius 1, because uh, thanks, to this, uh, thanks to these properties, uh, corollary is, uh, is that uh, when you take the dilation of the ball, uh, of our ball uh, centered at 0 of radius 1, is the ball of radius epsilon. Okay? So you can uh, take one ball and then uh, rescale with this uh, rescaling and, um, and obtain uh, all, uh, all possible balls. Okay, so probably uh, I can uh, uh, conclude. Uh, so um, what uh, I would like uh, to do tomorrow is uh, uh, to um, discuss a last metric property. So uh, uh, what is the dimension of metric space? Probably you have already uh, heard about this. Uh, sometimes uh, this is related to the dimension of fractals or uh, um, 
uh, so uh, uh, sets with uh, rational dimension or non-rational ones also, like Cantor sets. So uh, try to recall what is the symmetric dimension and explain why in this case, uh, uh, but it will be more or less the direct conclusion of this. Uh, in this case, the metric dimension, from the metric viewpoint, this space has dimension 4, and not 3. And, uh, um, and then maybe uh, state some uh, more uh, uh, general uh, um, um, definitions or statements uh, uh, for more general sub-Riemannian uh, geometries, just uh, to give uh, an opening to this viewpoint, so uh, say something more precise about vector fields uh, and uh, what is called Chow theorem. Uh, and, and then finish in the last uh, part uh, with this application on image reconstruction. So for today I stop here. Okay, and thank, thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Yes. I'm not sure it's like okay, it's like every seven. All right, sometimes. Don't understand why the distance between uh, zero and uh, zero zero z is the square uh, or is the root of z. Because uh, what is happening here is that uh, um, so if you um, uh, what I'm saying is that here the relation is that in time that is uh, correspond to one over a we move of 1 over a square, okay? So the length is this one, and this is the space we recover, okay? So if you call, what you should do to do this is to set this equal to z1 and to say that this guy is like square root of z. Is it okay? Maybe not. So, what I'm saying is that uh, with a curve that has length, let's say this length, I reach this point. Okay? This quantity on the vertical. The other two are zero. So, if you call this uh, uh, Z1, so you take this as a parameter, you uh, want to know in terms of this, uh, how much is this? This is uh, your distance. This is what computes your distance. So this quantity is the square root of this. And so the distance among this is the square root. It's just uh, the other way around. This is the square of this, so this is, the, uh, I mean, this is the square of this, and so. I think uh, you just uh, have to, um, uh, think in terms of path, so you can reach the, the point of uh, uh, coordinate z in time, which corresponds to the length, in this case, square root of z. So this is saying that the distance is a, a square root of z. I'm not sure it's better than before, but... <laughs> Are there any other comments or questions? For Davide. Yes, sorry. <laughs> so, are there other uh, metrics you can put on the Eisenberg groups that are quite as interesting as this one, or this is one of the only? Uh, indeed, uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, if you want to uh, put uh, other uh, metrics that are invariant. Uh, uh, with respect to the group structure and uh, satisfies this property. For this particular case, it is uh, more or less uh, the only one. It is like uh, if you put, uh, indeed, this uh, example plays the role of the Euclidean space for, uh, let's say, uh, Riemannian geometry. So this is a model for this kind of geometry. In, uh, in the Euclidean space, if you put another metric, the two things are different, but isometric. Up, I mean, you can, and in this case, it's similar. So you can put another one, but you end with the same geometry. Because in some sense, this is a flat, uh, flat space. But it's 
a little bit. Okay, maybe we have time for a last one. Yeah, maybe also more than that, actually. Um, is there a generalization of this uh, Eisenberg group and uh, the curves on it, or is it uh, al always yeah, yeah. three Yeah, there are uh, of there are generalization of this specific group uh, to um, all uh, even dimensions, uh, let's say uh, odd dimensions, uh, and um, also other generalizations or so groups of Eisenberg type. So it, I mean, there are many generalizations. Uh, in uh, in the sense of uh, having a mm, uh, geometric structure that is compatible with the, an algebraic one. So some of them are just uh, um, reproducing uh, the same structure in a, a higher dimension. Uh, other are just uh, more flexible. But um, so you, you have a lot of generalization of this. Uh, depending on how much you want your model to be uh, similar to that. I don't know if you were thinking to something more precise. I mean, can you like split the, the group? I was thinking about the... Okay, is there a, an algebraic structure or uh, something resembling one on the Carnot curves? Because we have like one... Uh, we have x, y and then a sort of a weird product. Mm -hmm. The z prime. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So can yeah. you like split this into like uh, a structure or? No, it's not really a product of two separate uh, separate things, but uh, there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, gener generalizations in, in in this sense, uh, meaning that uh, somehow <laughs> your structure is built as a lift of something that is lower dimension. Okay, uh, we can thank the Davide Barilari again and we wait for his third part of the course for tomorrow morning at 10.30. So thank you. Thank you.